Welcome to this example on three-dimensional forces and vectors. The following is an overview of this video. We have a pole that is in contact with a surface and it has two supporting cables. This could be thought of as the top view of a flagpole or as some structure coming out of a wall. Suppose the following force information was given to us. The force along cable CB is 1,200 newtons and travels from the pole at point C to the wall at point B. The force along cable CA is 500 newtons and travels from the pole at point C to the wall at point A. There is a 800 newton load applied in the negative y direction at the far end of the pole. Lastly, we know that the reaction force is such that it is a vector from point O to point C. With this pole in equilibrium, we are asked to find the x and y positions and the resultant force. First, let us create the position vectors. The vector RCB describes the path from point C to point B, where I, J, and K represent X, Y, and Z values respectively. Relative to point C, point B is 3 meters in the negative X direction, 7 meters in the positive Y direction, and negative 10 meters in the Z direction. The magnitude of RCB is the square root of the sum of the squares. That means the square root of negative 3 quantity squared plus 7 quantity squared plus negative 10 quantity squared. The magnitude of RCB is 12.57 meters. With this we can calculate the unit vector of RCB. Divide each vector component by the vector's magnitude. Notice how this will make the vector unitless. We find that the unit vector from C to B is negative 0.239i plus 0. 557j minus 0.796k. With that, we can find out how the force CB is distributed along this vector. That means multiplying FCB's value of 1,200 newtons by the unit vector CB. The result is FCB is equal to negative 286.8 newtons in the I direction, 668.4 newtons in the J direction, and negative 955.2 newtons in the k direction. The position vector RCA contains our unknowns. Still, it will be beneficial for us to describe it. Relative to point C, we assume point A is x meters in the positive x direction and y meters in the positive y direction. We know that it is 10 meters in the negative z direction. The magnitude of vector RCA is unknown because it contains unknown variables. However, we should still define the contributions for this magnitude. The unit vector of RCA is defined by dividing each of the vector's components, including the variables, by the magnitude of the vector, which is presently an unknown value itself. Now I suggest isolating each vector component as a single term. I do this for ease of identification. You'll see why shortly. So the I component of unit vector CA is x divided by the magnitude of RCA. The j component of UCA is y divided by the same magnitude and the z component is negative 10 divided by again the magnitude of RCA. I'll put those values in my inventory in the upper right corner of the video. Lastly we define vector ROC and its magnitude. This allows us to compute UOC which is the resultant force position vector. In order for this to exist in equilibrium, the sum of the forces in each direction must equal zero. The forces in each direction are comprised of their corresponding force components. All of the forces in the x direction are those with i components. All of the forces in the y direction are those with j components. And all of those in the z direction are those with k components. Summing the forces in the x direction and setting them equal to zero, we get negative 286.8 newtons from vector FCB's I component, plus 500 newtons times vector UCA's I component, plus the resultant force times vector UR's I component, and set that equal to zero. We carry this process out again for the y direction. We get 668.4 newtons from vector FCB's J component, plus 500 newtons times vector UCA's J component, plus the resultant force times vector UR's J component. 
we subtract the applied load of 800 newtons since it is in the negative y direction and set all of that equal to zero. We follow this procedure one last time for the z direction. We get negative 955.2 newtons from vector FCB's k component plus 500 newtons times vector UCA's k component plus the resultant force times vector UR's k component and set this equation equal to zero. The resultant force is only acting in the z direction, therefore vector UR's i and j components are zero. In the case of forces acting along the x and y directions, we have two equations and two unknowns. We solve for vector UCA's i component, and we find that it is equal to 0 0.5736. We solve for vector UCA's j component, and we find that it is equal to 0 0.2632. The magnitude of a unit vector equals 1. We know the value of two of the three unit vectors. Therefore, we can solve for the remaining unit vector. We find that unit vector UCA's k component is positive or negative 0 0.776. Since vector CA travels in the negative z direction, we select the negative choice. With the information currently in our inventory, we can calculate the values for x and y. We know the values of vector CA's k component and its unit vector's k component. Now we can solve to find out the magnitude of vector RCA. Knowing UCA's unit vector I component and the magnitude of RCA, we can find the value for X which turns out to be equal to 7.392 meters. Likewise, the same process is repeated for Y, where we find that Y is equal to 3.392 meters. Last but not least, we can solve for the resultant force. This can be solved from the equation containing the sum of the forces in the z direction. Substituting in known values, we find that the resultant force is equal to 1,343.2 newtons. A vector in three-dimensional space is made of three components. The magnitude of that vector is the square rooted sum of the squared quantity for each component. A unit vector is the original vector divided by its magnitude. The force vector equals the scalar force value multiplied by the unit vector it travels upon. When an object is in static equilibrium, the sum of the forces along each direction add up to zero. The magnitude of the unit vector that is to say the i component squared plus the j component squared plus the k component squared is equal to 1.